Hey everybody, welcome to the Geeks Rising YouTube channel. My name is Bandrew, this is my vlog, and today is Monday- That's not right. This is my Bandrew and I am vlog, and today is Monday, October 12th. So for absolutely no reason whatsoever, I want to go ahead and talk about one of my favorite television shows of all time, by the name of Battlestar Galactica. So most of you probably know the Battlestar Galactica from the Sci-Fi channel in 2003, but it was originally created in 1978 by Glenn A. Larson, and I believe it aired on uh, the ABC network, I think. The original series series ran for about 24 episodes from 1978 to 1979, and then it was cancelled. The original series is what the 2003 reimagining was based on, and it basically shows the Cylon attack on the 12 colonies and the exodus to find Earth that follows. So one big difference between the 78 and the 2003 version is in the 78 version, the Cylons weren't created by humans. They were actually created by a reptilian race that were presumably killed by the Cylons. So quick side Side note, Star Wars came out in 1977. Now this series comes out on television in 1978 and it gets a bunch of crap from people saying, what are you doing? This is Star Wars. Isaac Asimov. Yes, the Isaac Asimov is actually quoted as saying this. Let me, let me read it to you. Star Wars was fun and I enjoyed it, but Battlestar Galactica was Star Wars all over again and I couldn't enjoy it without amnesia. And then, yeah, as I said, it was canceled after just one year in 1979 after 24 episodes. People got so pissed when ABC canceled Battlestar Galactica that they started writing letters. They wrote letters to ABC. What are you doing? Where's our TV show? And then they wrote so many letters that ABC said, okay, we'll give you a TV show. And that sparked the, the spinoff series Galactica 1980. So the original pitch for Galactica 1980 is that it's set five years in the future after the end of Battlestar Galactica. And we see the survivors of the attack on the 12 colonies actually find Earth, but they're still being followed by the Cylons. So, so they don't want to stop, so they start heading back into deep space. Here's where we really go off the deep end. President of the 12 colonies, Gaius Baltar, wants to go back in time and help Earth develop their technology quicker to help defeat the Cylons in modern time. When he pitches this to the quorum, they say, no, that's terrible, that's stupid, which I'm sure is what the television exec said. And then he goes and finds a time-traveling spacecraft and goes back anyways, and then he's followed by Apollo and Starbuck, I think, and they travel back and forth feeding information to the current time battle star. So a bunch of actors that were written into Galactica 1980 did not sign back on, so they had to rework the whole script. In one of the rare good moves by a television executive or group of television executives, they said, hey, drop the time travel stuff. That's kind of dumb. And I really like that they did this for two reasons. First, I don't think time travel really fits into the Battlestar Galactica universe. Secondly, and more importantly, one of the writers who was working on Galactica 1980, Belisario, went on and reworked this idea of time travel and created Quantum Leap, which we all can agree is awesome! So with all the problems of Galactica 1980, it only ran for a couple months from January 1980 to May 1980 and was canceled after 10 episodes. Over the next two decades, there were a bunch of attempts to revive the series from people like Tom DeSanto to Brian Singer, but most importantly, Richard Hatch. Yeah, Apollo from the original series. This guy co-wrote novels. He co-wrote comic books. He created like a proof of concept trailer called The Second Coming. This guy is committed to the cause. How awesome is that? DeSanto and Singer made the most progress and they were actually in pre-production of a series that would take place 25 years after the end of the original Battlestar Galactica series. Unfortunately, when 9-11 happened, the whole thing came to a standstill and was eventually scrapped. I appreciate all the work that these people put in to get this series revived because we wouldn't be where we are today without the work they put in. But I am so glad that they failed because 23 years after Galactica 1980 ended, we got the three hour miniseries by Ron Moore and Glenn Larson and it had all the amazing people we could want in it and it was a freaking masterpiece. The miniseries originally aired on December 9th and December 10th, 2003 on the Sci-Fi Channel to 3.9 million and 4.5 million people respectively. That is a huge success. That makes it the third most watched program on the Sci-Fi Network. Following the success of the miniseries, less than a year later, we get the beginning of the actual Battlestar Galactica series, which went on from 2004 to 2009 and consists of 75 amazing episodes of awesome. 
following the end of Battlestar Galactica, we get the series called Caprica, which is 19 episodes, and it documents the creation of the Cylons, and it is freaking awesome. It's totally different from Battlestar Galactica, and that it's more of a family drama, but it is still amazing. Then a couple years later, in 2012, we get the web series Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome, which follows the young William Adama during the first Cylon War, and this is another amazing series. I love it! There was even a potential of this being picked up for series, but it didn't get picked up, dang numb it. After that, there was a little more news in 2014 that it could be turned into a feature film, and the last news I was able to find is that Jack Paglin was actually hired to write a script for this, but I wasn't able to find anything else, so I don't know the status of this. If you have any updates or know anything about this, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'd love to know. As exciting as it is to potentially have a Battlestar Galactica movie, I think I'm kind of scared because the BSG series was just so flawless. It's, it's one of those rare series where every single person seems to be firing on all cylinders. I just don't forecast ever seeing another sci-fi space opera like this done so well. Although I am kind of excited to see the Expanse series. That looks pretty tight, and the book was great. All right, guys. Well, I guess that'll frackin' do it for me today. If you enjoyed the video, give me a big ol' thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, give me a big ol' thumbs down. If you want more, click the cartoon of me in the corner, and I guess that'll do it. So say we all.